What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the, another episode of the Mindless Horror Podcast. I'm here with another talented person from Queen Mary's Dark Harbor. We've been diving deep into uh, Queen's event, man, and we're just getting started. We're just getting started. Today, I'm here with Nick, a.k.a. Killis. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. How about you? I'm doing all right, man. I, You know, I got myself a new book, and I'm, I'm reading that, and... Uh, in between this, in between doing that, I'm doing these, so I'm having I'm having a good time talking with people. Right on, man. It's pretty cool. Right on, man. So let, let's just let's just dive into it, man. When when did you know you wanted to scare act? What was the, what was the moment? Like you were just like, I want to do this. Um, the moment for me was uh, I was 12 years old, and my aunt was living with us for the month of October because she's a scare actor at Knott's Berry Farm. Right. She does Knott's Berry Farm. And I was turning 13, didn't know what to do for my birthday. And she was like, hey, you should come to Dark Harbor, uh, to Knott's Berry Farm. It'll be really fun. I was like, okay, cool. My sister had gone years prior. She said it was fun. So I went. And I, I went and watched everybody and went through all the mazes, did the scaring thing and all that. And I had so much fun. And then, like, literally that night I was like, I got to do this. Right. But, like, next year. But I'm 13 years old. <laughs> and they were like, you got to be 18. And I was like, oh, well, damn. All right. Uh, I guess I'll wait until I was 18. And, uh, yeah, that was when I knew. For sure, but I had did like a couple of uh, little home haunts here and there with like my school and uh, some local stuff. And it was pretty fun. That's when we kind of knew it was like 12, 13 years old. So right. Was, this is what I want to do. And that's what sparked the bug, man. That's what sparked it right there. Oh yeah, uh, kicked it off. Um, obviously, uh, we know you've done some. You've done your time at Queen Mary, man, and you continue to do so. Uh, when did you know you wanted to do Queen Mary? Was it? Was it? Early on, you're like you went to Queen Mary's event, and you're like, I think I'd much rather do this. Or did you did you check out all the other events before going to Queen Mary that were like, maybe I'll go here and then I'll go here. Uh, before I worked at Queen, the only event I had ever been to was Not Scary Farm and Six Flags. Okay. Six Flags was a little bit out of my way for driving, right. and I was actually supposed to go to Knotts, but they kind of <laughs> screwed me over because they told me when I turned uh, when I was 17, going to turn 18. I was like, hey, can I audition and everything? And um, they were like, yeah, when that time comes, just give us a call back and we'll we'll, we'll set you up. And uh, call back when it came closer to audition time, because I have family member. Like I said, my aunt was uh, working at Knox. She gave me the direct line and I called and they were like, oh, we can't hire you because you turned 18 in October. And I was like, oh, well, that kind of sucks. I guess I'll just wait. And then my cousin, who was going, oh, first year or two, was auditioning for Dark Harbor. I was like, hey, just come work here. And I was like, okay. And I did the audition, let my bo- the boss, David, know that like, hey, I'm not 18 yet, but I will be in October. And he goes, okay. And then I got the call to like, like the, my birthday was on a Sunday that year. Right. I got a call Friday from David. And he said, hey, I got a birthday present for you. You're going to come work. And I was, I had never been more excited for anything <laughs> in my life. That was the best birthday present I've ever gotten to this day. I mean, I can only imagine getting that phone call, dude, and, and you wanting to do this. I mean, me just being a fan, and, and, you know, if I had the opportunity to do it for a night, I would do it in a freaking heartbeat. But oh, yeah. j- just just getting that phone call on your on your 18th birthday weekend and just like, hey, uh, we got a spot for you. Come down. And yeah. the rest is history from there. Yeah, they ca- <laughs> and they casted me as a – when I got casted, they were like, okay, you can't work till you're 18. So I was like, all right, fair enough. And they were like – and that's and they put me as a backup. Which okay. basically means that uh, if you if someone calls off or whatever, then you can come in. Right. Or they were like down down a couple of people, like they would call you the backups, in. and that's where I got called in. Then <laughs> you came in, man, and I bet you uh, I bet you killed it, man. I bet you killed it. Um, oh yeah, because the- I got one of my favorite stories out of working <laughs> doing that night. It was the most fun. Obviously, that opening weekend, you got to share that story now. You kind of you kind of set that one yeah. up. I want to hear that. What you got? So. Uh, when I got casted as a backup, I was so excited. I showed up early and got there, and I and they were like, "Oh, go talk to uh, to to Cat. Cat's one of the behind the scenes people who's a manager. She runs the talent with David and all the other people. Right. She's like, go talk to Cat. They'll have your makeup and costume card and all that stuff. I go talk to Cat, and she goes, "Here's your makeup card. It wasn't even a makeup card. It was just a costume card. <laughs> and I go hit it, and they were like, "Just take this to costuming. They'll know what it is. I'm like, "Okay, cool. I go and take it to them. And the room that I was in, it was just a, it was called the head room. It was just a pitch black room in circus. This is back when we had the dome. Right. And, um, they gave me this black cloak 
like a solid black cloak and a fluorescent green Michael Myers mask <laughs> that they had painted and they had they had green ones and orange ones. And so they gave me the green one. I'm like, why the hell am I wearing a green Michael Myers mask? And then they take me to my spot. I'm like, oh, it's just a pitch black room and it's got like little fake heads hanging from it. And you're right. supposed to be one of the fake heads hanging in there. But uh, the best part of that night was I was tag teaming with the guy and we would take 30 minute breaks, like alternating you like work an hour, 30 minute break, work an hour, 30 minute break. But one time I went back in and my eyes were just getting adjusted. And I scared the hell out of this girl. And the room was shaped kind of like a V. So you had to go kind of this way. And then there was like a metal gate right here with like a, like a slot that you could stand in and hide and scare people. Right. And then you, if you go around it, you go into the next room. But the room shaped like a V. So I scared this girl so bad. She wasn't paying attention. She just took off running and she ran face first into that corner and she went she went so fast and hit so hard that it actually split like it put a crack you could see oh white my god the wall. and i was like oh shit <laughs> and uh that was my first night at dark harbor I dude i mean girl, you did you did something right you made the girl pretty much break the set I mean, yeah, and they had to they had to call in and uh, get people to get her out, and they had to come in and fix set like later that night or at the end of the night. But oh, I kind of gave away the illusion with that light coming through. But it was, I was just like, I'm hooked. Like this is a drug. <laughs> Dude, That's where I knew. I don't, I don't think I've ever heard a story on the show where we we've had someone like you make a guest run into the wall and nearly break the damn thing. Like, <laughs> yeah. That is insane. Like I, I've heard some stories, man. Like I, I just talked with um with Robbie recently, and he talked about how a Stranger, guest, yeah. yeah, he talked about how to guess at Horn Knights untied his shoes, and he was just shocked by that. I never even yeah. heard that either. So like, you guys are setting new bars with these stories, man. Like I've, I've, you, you guys are telling me stuff I've never even heard, which I love. Yeah, that w- that was back when I was in mazes because my first year I was in mazes, right? And uh, I bounced around a lot in different mazes. So I was in circus. It was the first year in Intrepid. I worked it and I got the slide in every maze, except for the first night I was there. Cause I was in that dark room. So right. it wasn't safe, but every other day I was sliding and it was so much fun. I got so, to slide on the ship. So sliding, man, when did you know you wanted to start sliding? Obviously this is, I, I always look at this as a, as a really, it's a, it's an art really, honestly, it really is an art for scaring. Um, it's one of my favorite things to watch at, at events. When, when did you know you wanted to start sliding, dude? Uh, probably when I was like 13, 14, I went, when I went to Knott's, I was watching a lot of the Knott's Berry Farm guys doing the slider show there at Knott's and stuff. Right. And I was like, that's super cool. Like, I want to be part of the cool kids group. I want to <laughs> be the sliders. And uh, yeah, that's when I kind of started. And my aunt kind of gave me in contact with some people. And they told me what I should do, what I shouldn't do, get some gear. And I taught myself. I'm self-taught. Oh, wow. For... For a while, I was self-taught, and then the first year of the Q, uh, QM Sliders boot camp, before it was as big as it, it is now, right? Um, that's where I really honed it in and honed my craft because uh, I wasn't. I, I, I to this day say I'm still not that good because <laughs> there's always room for improvement. But uh, that's where like I met Nemo, I met Squeaks, a bunch of the I met Evil and a bunch of those guys, and they kind of like fine tuned my skills to say and. Uh, yeah, that's kind of where I like kind of figured it out was right around 13 when I started doing it and then it just got better as it went. Yeah, I mean, I, I see a lot of people like you mentioned knots, you know, the the birth of sliding, uh, you, you know, using it as a scare right there. And you know, I, I I see I'm seeing it incorporated now in other haunts. You know, at like you know, I see it at Six Flags, um, I see it at at uh, at Queen Mary. Um, and you're starting to see it worldwide, cross country. You know, you're starting to yeah, see man. it in places like Germany and Japan. You know, and it's like, it, it's nuts to see how much this has evolved over the years. You know what I mean? Yeah, man, it's it's wild. I saw some people in like Germany, like on YouTube. I've never been to Germany, but I saw them on YouTube, and right. I was just like, it's in Germany, dude. That's right. wild. And like China, same thing. I was like, this is wild. Like I never, I always expected it as like a United States thing, like kind of like oh yeah everywhere's got like a slider and every like haunt right and then i see it in like other countries and i was like this is insane like 
and I'm a part of it for right. <laughs> like why <laughs> you're part of like the next generation to keep it going and then you know yeah. generations after that will keep it going it, it really is I mean I've talked to some really uh amazing people who were there for the start of it and just hearing the stories of what they did you know back then to what it is now it's just it, it blows my mind to see how much you know, pads have gotten better, you know, how much equipment has gotten better overall. And it's like, it's it's really nuts to see a lot of talented people like yourself who go out there and, and really utilize that tool and just overall do some insane and crazy shit that I am impressed every year that I see from anyone. And then sliding gear is uh, just like everything else in the world. It evolves and adapts got to change it up to save our bodies man because yeah. back in the day like i met slider one and i've heard some stories from him he was saying yeah we would just take like volleyball knee pads and like hot glue the plastic to it and that's how they used to do it and before they even started doing that they were just baseball sliding with jeans and stuff if you've ever watched the sliders at ghost town right. dvd yeah like it, and it's wild to see like the the newer stuff that comes out and then like people innovate it look like putting sparkers on it and like doing all kinds of other crazy stuff. It's wild. Yeah, it really is, man. And, and I, like I said, I am so, I, I, I respect anyone who goes out there and, and does that, you know, it, it's a, it's a lot of work on your body and a lot of, it takes a big toll on your body, but every year it, it's for the entertainment of the guests and, and just to get a, a really solid scare. Um, obviously there are other ways to scare and you, you actually, uh, just gave us an example of, of you scaring a person into a wall. I mean, that's just that's hilarious to me, and I can't get over that. I'll probably be talking about that for a while. That's that's one of my favorites that I've heard thus far. Honestly. Yeah, it's 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 one of my my crowning jewels. I like to say <laughs> before I made it on the streets. I've got tons of good stories with scares and stuff. It's like it's wild. Some uh, of the things people believe, man. It's I know, wild. right? It, it's nuts. Speaking of, of streets, man, so you mentioned your first year you were on, uh, you know, you did some mazes and whatnot. When did you hit the streets? Uh, next year. So 2017 was my first year on streets, right? Yeah, 2016. 2016 was my first year. 2017 is when I made it to streets. Made it to and, streets. Uh, I, I originally actually wasn't even supposed to be on the show team. Okay. Uh, I was just supposed to be a street slider which I was perfectly content with. I was so stoked. I made it outside, happy. First day, they were like, you're going to be in the show. You already know it. You learned it. You practiced it. You're in the show today. I'm like, cool. <laughs> let's get it going. <laughs> like, let's, get, let's, let's make it happy, Captain. And uh, went out and did it. And then after that, it was just every night, hey, you're you're going to be doing the show. Like after like night four, they would come up to me. I'm like, I'm in the show. They're like, yeah. I'm like, all right, cool. Let's, let's go do it. Let's do it. Man, if the pressure wasn't on then, the pressure was on there that night of that first show, man. I mean, yeah, that, that is that is awesome though that you got to like your first year. They just threw you in the show, man. And and I've actually I've gotten to see the show. Um, I, my first year I ever went to Dark Harbor at the event. Uh, it was in 2019, and uh, we got to uh, we we were in the little VIP area, but in that area it kind of overlooks the whole you know, the, the circus, the street, all that stuff. So you can get a good viewing of the show from there. And I remember just yeah. grabbing my Jack and Coke and just kind of chilling up there and watching you guys do your thing, man. That was, that was really good. I really, I, it brought back memories of when you used to see that at Knott's, you know? So, yeah, it was definitely, I would go up there sometimes and uh, just watch, like not watch, but like kind of do my job and then like overlook. And I'm just like, wow, it's real pretty up here. Yeah. Hey, look, there's my friends. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm doing a job. Hold on. <laughs> you, like, snap out real quick. You're like, it's it's really nice up here. And then you look down, you're like, I got to be down there. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm supposed to be down there. Damn it, all right. <laughs> uh, I mean, the Queen, their event, obviously, Dark Harbor, it, 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 it's really one of my favorites. And I've mentioned this time and time again. I love the, uh, the freedom you guys have there. But I love the... the um, the differences of characters that you see throughout the event, you know, that goes from the mazes to the streets, you know, people that just roam around like the captain himself. Um, I think the character is what is what really makes this event. Um, tell us a little bit about your character, uh, Killis, man. I want to I want to hear how this got started and, and the birth of Killis. So my character is a um, psychopathic schizophrenic clown that uh, in a mental hospital was given a lobotomy. And uh, kind of it went wrong and he just started to hate everybody, hated the world, hated people, doctors, everybody. Right. And uh, his twin sister, Looney, my best, uh, that's my sister. Uh, 
she uh we broke each other out of the asylum joined the circus where we later met our dad evil and uh that's where that kind of character comes in at, and like my character wears like a straight jacket and it's painted and it's got all kinds of different stuff on it all of it means something to me like there's a every like right yeah right here it's got three names on it it's got looney uh joker and uh a thing those are like the three people that i love the most and then everyone else's name is all over like i got Tor uh torrid right here i got mooch here i got creep on the back i got everybody and then my favorite part about the whole thing is on the back is a quote from edgar Allan poe one of my favorite like horror like uh poets i guess or writers right and it says uh the scariest monsters are the ones that lurk within our souls and i've I've taken that to like um, basically that kill us is a part of me as a person, but it's that side that you don't want to meet where right. like when I get so mad and so angry that that's who comes out. It, right. It's kill us that you're going to deal with. And that's the kind of uh, thing I put out in the haunt. I, I really, I, I you know, you mentioned the, um, the asylum and whatnot. Sorry, I'm plugging in the charger real quick. Um, no <laughs> You mentioned the uh, the asylum, you know, aspect of it, and you being this kind of, cl you know, schizophrenic clown and everything. Obviously, the the one inspiration that a lot of people get, uh, one of my favorite villains of all time, the Joker himself. Um, you know, I, I think uh, this character has really revolutionized what we think and and express of of like the evilness and and you know the cruelness of clowns, which I I, I really love it when I see people like yourself take, get their own take on it and, and, and really make it yours. Um, obviously we see a lot of different adaptations of the Joker from, you know, um, Cesar Romero all the way to like Jack Nicholson, uh, Jared Leto and, uh, Heath Ledger, Joaquin Phoenix, you know, you name them. Yeah. They, they all brought their, their own, own like style. Yeah. Yeah. And, their own little style and flavor to it. Yeah. And, I, you know, like I said, me being a huge Joker fan, a huge Batman fan, you know, I just, it's always one thing when I get to learn more about the Joker and more about these characters. So hearing your story, man, I just, you know, I, I like the, the, the approach that you took to it. And, you know, you have your own little storyline of, of Looney being your sister, you know, evil being your dad. Um, I, I really, I really dig it. And it's, and it's stuff like that. When I learn stuff like that, that it makes me, more interactive with characters at, when I go to the events because now I know a little bit of backstory behind them and, and why they act the way they do um, that it's just some some of my favorite things to like you know see it in action um, yeah it, it's one of my favorite things to do dude I love it oh yeah I love hearing people's character stories when they yeah. come up with them and like backstories because like you I'm a fan like even though I'm working it I'm a fan of like right. everybody else's stuff so like getting to hear other people's backstories on their characters and stuff it gives you more of that in-depth story. So when you go and see them as a guest, it makes it way more cooler for you as a person. And as like, you're going to support your friends kind of deal. And it's like, cool. But like, I have a more in-depth to why you're doing what you're doing. Like you right. said, and it makes it way cooler. Right. Like made way better experience. Yeah, man. I, and I, like I said, I've heard some fantastic stories with talking with a bunch of the Queen Mary people and, uh, you know, I'm just, I can't wait to go back and I can't wait to actually like no take what I know and just, and apply it to when I actually go see everyone. Um, yeah. Uh, I, it's one, like I said, it's one of my favorite things. Uh, I'm a huge sucker for, uh, interactiveness and I, I'm like a kid when I come down to that stuff. Like when someone talks to me or someone freaking interacts with me, like <laughs> my inner kid comes out, I'm like, Oh, he's talking to me. Let's do this. You know, yeah. it, it, it's a really fun time. And I, and I, and I love one of my favorite things too is, uh, watching you guys just watching you guys in general just scare and and just you know sell the story even more i think that's one of my favorite things i did at, at knots in 2019 was i just i would just sit down and, and just watch you know just watch people get scared watch people scare watch people sell the story um and you see that a lot with dark harbor even the, the little time that i spent on the streets I was seeing every character sell the story that they were supposed to be selling and, and really bringing that story to life, which is a huge part of, of any of these haunts. There's always that essential storyline, and all the characters have their own aspect to bring to the table to, to bring that story to life even further. So what was one thing uh, you loved doing to guests that really sold your story even more? Oh, man. Uh that's a good one because there's a couple different things that I like to do. Uh, 
one of them was uh, I'd pull my hair out. Oh, like I got really long hair. Right. And then I will uh, put gel in it, but it's not it doesn't make it stick. It makes it look wet, like right. sweating and it drapes down in front of my face. And like I would walk by doing these, and like I would pull, and like it would pull out like bits of hair. Um, another one is like I would drool like on myself and all over me. Right. And people would just look at me and go, "Hell no!" And just, like, <laughs> go the other and way. That's where, and that's where I'm all like, "Your ass is mine." Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they're, they're, that's probably like my two main ones. And like talking to myself, like just gibberish, like nothing makes sense. Like, right. If that means anything. Like, I'll just be, like, I'll snap one way, talk another way, and then snap this way, talk, and, like, just a couple different things that, like, kind of more sell the character as, like, the schizophrenic crazy guy. That sounds like a lot of fun. I can honestly, you know, you mentioned the people when you did the drool thing and people just turn away. I'm the one crazy guy that would probably walk towards it and to find out what's going on, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I put pig dye in there too, so it's different colors. Right. Like I'd put black in, and it'd just be like black ooze or like red or green, <laughs> just, just wild stuff. Right. And that stuff stains. That stuff stains your, <laughs> your like skin and everything. You're over there at night trying to scrub it off, and <laughs> yeah. And they're like at the end of the night with baby wipes and stuff. You're like, get dark. Oh. <laughs> which day works good? <laughs> Found that out. Which day works amazing? There you go. I mean, uh, one of the things I love hearing from from everybody that, that works these events is obviously some um, some guest interactions, man. Obviously, we just heard. Obviously, your first one was the the literally the nail to the wall. <laughs> um, <laughs> but what else do you got? I mean, you must have had so many interactions on the streets, man. Oh, I had tons. Um, I've I made girl I made people like piss themselves. Oh. Uh, I've made people fall into bushes, like not intentionally, but like you just scare them so bad they like take off backwards and they're right. not paying attention where they're at and they just fall in. I, I've got I've got like two or three that are like I, that are like my crown jewels. One of them was uh, up in the front by the bricks by the exit of Intrepid, right? Which is where Mooch had fallen off the light post. You remember? That? Love that <laughs> story. That story. Yeah. Oh, I know you're friends. watching, bro. <laughs> yeah, I told you I watched them all, man. I've been, I just actually finished Bree and Sparrow's episode today. Oh, that was. I mean, I, 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 it's funny you bring that one up. I was really loving uh, the Rum Spice story. I mean, you know, it was supposed to be <laughs> Matt was supposed to be telling me like, oh, ask him about it, you know, as a joke. But then when he got into detail about it, like, I was like, wow, spice. so much respect rum for that spice is, Rum Spice is something else. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, that's but what I, I want to see that in person. But continue, my friend. Yeah, you might live to regret. <laughs> <laughs> so this story it's like right there by the exit of intrepid and there's a bush with a light in it and it's just a blue light for effects and stuff right. and um and like a dark corner right there and um if you, there's no one there it's clear traffic you can get people like just right there sliding out and the it's red brick so it slides really well and it makes this like <laughs> sound so it sounds oh, nice. even more wavy. and um there were these girls that were already scared and they're bunched up like this, locked armed in arm. Oh yeah, you see that? And, all, that's the that's the normal. That's the that's the typical yeah, haunt. You know, this is, this is like the haunt wall. Like you can't get us, kind of deal. And I'm it's like, like nah, that just makes it easier to. That just get makes you. my job. Yeah. But they're standing up against this uh, like this little curb. It's no more than like you know just this curb with a bush in it, like right. planter. And I was like, I'm gonna get them. I was like, I'm just gonna get them. <laughs> and sure enough, who slid out and. They all, one girl fell backwards. And of course, they're all hooked together. So they all went backwards. <laughs> but like four of the girls are wearing sandals and they just go right there, <laughs> like fly off their feet. And I was just laughing my ass off. Like, just, <laughs> oh God, that did not just happen. So, note and to all the, the girls out there please don't do the wall because if that happens to you, they're all going down. It's, it, it's called the wall of death for a reason. There so, it is. I mean, I know, I, I mean, I know that wall of death, but I also know another wall of death that I've personally been in, and it's pretty fun. Yeah, too. <laughs> yeah. I got, I like to call it the wall of death. Another one, uh, this one wasn't like it was, it was more funny right. to me because, okay, this is back when I, my first year I was working at a maze. I got sent into Dead Rise that night, and my air, I was called um, a floater. Okay, what floaters do is they go all over the maze. They right. got full access to from beginning to end. You got whole access. Uh, there was this. We called it the circle of death because it was a, a secret door that opened that we were in control of. 
and we could open it whenever we felt like. And it had a giant glowing red exit sign. <laughs> and people were like, how do we get out of here? And, like they would just keep walking in circles. We'd make dudes walk in circles for like five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, they would go back the other way. And we'd be like, nope, that's not how you get out of here. And then they would come back and keep doing circles. Like, what the hell? But uh, <laughs> we had this group come in and they had like, a, like I want to say she was like six or seven years old. She was a little thing. She couldn't be much older than 10. Right. But I was hidden in like a little spot, kind of like a little cubby spot that like you couldn't see me unless you were looking right at me. Right. right. And um, I slid out and all she does, she does one of these. She goes like, bitch, and like walks away. <laughs> <laughs> I literally laid on the floor laughing for like 10 minutes holding my stomach because this little girl did want to. Like it looked like out of a cartoon where she was just like this. <laughs> and I was just <laughs> laughing so hard. Oh, man. <laughs> didn't expect it from a little kid yeah like, i expected it from the adults but this little kid was just it it blew me i mean away. you can't really get mad at the kid at that point you know that like that's that's comedy right there man no, even the even the parents were laughing they were like what yeah and, like it was just great and uh one of my other ones it's my like like my favorite one i've ever had is uh it's a p story and uh i saw this girl she did not look scared she didn't look entertained at all she was actually like talking shit she was like this place ain't shit like kind of deal (laughs) and um i was like all right i'm gonna show you ain't shit and like i come around the corner and she was by uh so you've been there so you know the center stage where they do the fire shows right and then they have the picnic tables around it yeah she was kind of like walking kind of sideways towards like that area but she wasn't really paying attention and uh i walk up next to her and i take my hand and smack the table wearing a glove and she like jumps in her boyfriend's arms. And the boyfriend just kind of shoved her off, like, this is all you, dude. <laughs> like, so it, was, it, looked like, it looked like something out of Scooby Doo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like just Scooby jumping into Shaggy's arms kind of deal. Yeah. And uh, she just looked like, what the fuck? And like, um, my character wears scleras. Right. So like, the whites of my eyes are all black. Oh, nice. And so she was like freaking out. She was like, he doesn't have fucking eyes. He doesn't have fucking eyes. And like, now she like falls backwards and trips and is like doing one of those spider crawls on the ground and i just kind of like get down close to her and i start drooling and she freaks out (laughs) and like she finally gets her bearings together and gets on her feet and starts running but like as she like stood up like she was wearing those really like light jeans kind of deal and the whole crotch was just dark oh man dude oh she just peed (laughs) like (laughs) just like Gross. (laughs) Gross. <laughs> just kept on going. Just kept she like going. took off running, and I was just like, "Gross." And I looked at her boyfriend, and I was like, "You might want to go get that cleaned up." <laughs> kind of deal. <laughs> oh man, that's. I mean, for one, that's embarrassing for that person. I mean, you have to walk around the rest of the night with that up. So, have fun with that. But man, I I, I love listening to those stories, man. They're they're some of the best things that make your haunt experience so much better especially if you get to see that as a guest you know just at happening you're like oh shit like one of my favorite things that i ever saw as a guest ever was at knots and i was in i was in a cs and i was chilling and i was just filming you know just getting stock footage and whatnot and out of nowhere all these sliders came and just slid up and these girls just floored like (laughs) the fastest i've ever seen them and it was so bad that they had them like all surrounded and at that point, they just crawled out and, like, crawled all the way to, like, where the Ferris wheel is at and then got up and left. I was yeah, like, we've, oh my God. we've done that a couple times. I love those we've four stories, man. Yeah, we've done that a couple times where, like, we've chased people. We've blocked them in the bushes. And uh, I remember one time we, like, traded off. We got to chase this one kid around the park. <laughs> <laughs> like it was like a relay race. This kid kept running. Right. And like I was chasing him and then someone else started chasing him. So I stopped and I look over and someone else is chasing him. And I'm like, this kid's gotta be tired at this point. And I'm like, I keep him just doing laps. It was funny. <laughs> it was like track and field, man. You guys are just, you know, giving the baton and switching off. And... Yeah, exactly. And it's great. It's funny to watch too, especially yeah. from like my perspective, because like I'm in hot mode and you just see this person just go <sighs> like by you and you're just like huh and then you see your buddy coming up behind you and you're like okay Okay. (laughs) (laughs) yeah man i mean especially like like i said we were mentioning the vip area you know you get an overview of everything imagine just sitting up there and just watching that go because you get an overview of the whole thing that'd be hilarious (laughs) 
That'd yeah. be great, man. That VIP lounge is pretty pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's got a, that, that was actually a joke one time for for one year. <laughs> a VIP lounge. Yeah, it was a joke between the, between the sliders. Anytime something went, anytime something bad happened, or like we were in, uh, someone from the sl- t- uh, slider team was involved with something, it was I was in the VIP lounge with Sparrow. <laughs> just because we didn't want to get in trouble for something. <laughs> uh, man. We had an inside joke that uh, HR has a stack of papers with all of our names already filled out in them. You just got to go sign them. <laughs> just got to go them. sign them and it's good to go. It's like, okay, <laughs> what I do today, yeah, it's about yeah. accurate. Let me sign it. <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah that, that, looks, that looks accurate. Obviously, we know the boat has a, a paranormal history onto it. You've been yeah. working the event since what, 2016? Yeah. That is a total of three years. Did Have you seen or have you felt anything creepy on that boat? Oh, yeah. Uh, so this was back when Soulmate was still there. Right. And uh, Grace Vogel had her mates. This was, I think, the year prior to Feast coming in. Okay. And um, where, the, where, it takes, where my story takes place is both times was in Soulmate. Because I didn't get to work Lullaby or B340, which I'm kind of sad about because I wanted to work Lullaby because I heard all the ghost stories and stuff. And I just saw it was really cool. Right. And yeah, but uh, Soulmate, there was this room. I was playing two parts that night uh, back in 2016. I was playing two parts. It was um, a head in a cage. It was literally just a head. It was a table. I had a slot in it. Just this was showing. Just my head. And then the other spot was a janitor spot. As a janitor, I had a full jumpsuit and everything. I fully approve. I'm a janitor myself. I approve. Yeah, man. It, it was actually a pretty comfortable costume, believe it or not. But even though it was really hot on the ship, right. that thing actually breathed really well. So it was nice. But uh, my room, that room, was uh, it had it was like a weird little room shaped like a V again. Right. And uh, it had like this weird fog glass kind of deal. And they put wire around uh, from that glass to a post because it was just open. Right. So people could so they just put this wire around it so you had to go around and then they had a metal table uh with body parts in the like in the sink and then the table and stuff kind of looked like a butcher's table right and then when you go through um that room there's like a full butcher's table with like uh with body parts a saw and uh some barrels and stuff in there and this one group uh this one couple it was just two of them it was a boyfriend girlfriend i can hear them beating and banging on stuff and I hear other monsters saying, hey, don't, don't hit the set. Right. And I was like, okay, and my spot's a blind corner because you got to go through a dark little hallway. Then you get into my room, and there's a wall right here, and the door's right here. So I'm like, I know I'm going to get it. Right. And I smacked the wall, and I was like, stop hitting the, the set. And it, like, scared them. And right. then they just kind of took off and went around the room. Well, as soon as they got through that door... I just hear a loud crashing and banging sound. I'm like, these motherfuckers. Like, I'm going to get them now. Yeah. Now I'm pissed. Like, you're breaking stuff. Yeah. And I go in there and I go, I peek my head through the door and I said, hey. And in that other room where that butcher's table is, is a light uh, that shines kind of like at you. Right. Um, I see about a six foot tall silhouette of a person. Oh, I'm sorry. That, that, that I'm sorry. That was, that was actually me. Uh, <laughs> I was a six foot person just chilling there. <laughs> uh but that guy the boyfriend was only like maybe five eight okay. kind of deal but i see it's a, just a silhouette and like i can see through it and it's, it's got no distinct facial features or anything it's just like head shoulders torso legs right, right? And just kind of standing there and i'm sitting there like what the fuck and it rushed me like whoa went, <laughs> yeah and through this other, like, in that same room, there's, like, a hallway, but it's blocked off with a curtain and some speakers for music. Right. And I could cut through there to get a double scare with a, or a tag team scare with someone else. Right. And I see the curtains just go, whoosh, And I shit my pants. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. And, like, I go darting through the curtains. And on the other side of those curtains is the person I was tag teaming with that night who was in, like, the room before me right i was like hey did you see anything come running through here or anything like that and she goes no nothing nothing's happened why she shows just that asshole couple and i went oh fuck no and i took off and went down to my break the our break room that was on the ship right i'm drinking water and i'm like what the actual fuck just happened and the maze supervisor comes through and goes what's wrong you're supposed to be in your spot right now 
And I was like, I, I'm pretty sure I just saw a ghost. <laughs> like, I'm kind of shaken up about it. He goes, what did it look like? And I was like, it just looked like a tall silhouette, like just black see-through silhouette. And he goes, oh, that's so-and-so. You're fine. Just go back. He won't oh. bother me. <laughs> and I was like, the fuck what are you talking about, man? So they, have oh him, they have him by name and everything. They have a whole list yeah. of the ghosts. <laughs> Yeah, they were just like, oh, that's so-and-so. You're good. Just go back in there. I think they called him Johnny or something. He's supposed <laughs> to be named after the guy uh, that got crushed in Door 13. Right. Half Hatch Henry is the he betrays. They were like, oh, yeah, that's just him. You're good. Go back in. I was like, you got me fucked up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't go back uh, in, honestly. I'd be like, oh, hell no, I ain't going back. You get someone else to work yeah. that part of the rest of the night. Yeah, but uh, I ended up going back, and it, it was fine the rest of the night. Just uh, the one part where, like, scared the living daylights he out of me. He just wanted to introduce himself and, you know. Yeah, and just and like uh, Bree said in the last episode, uh, your first year, they're going to haze you. Yeah. <laughs> if you come back, they know you're worth it. So, yeah. I ended up coming back. I came back for more punishment. <laughs> uh, and then, same, like, couple days after that, same thing, same maze, but I'm a different character this time. It's called uh, Against the Grind, which is the same thing as the floater. I got to go all over the maze. Right. And, um, I was in the engine room, and the engine room had this metal grate on it, which was cool to slide on because it was like it's. It felt like sliding on ice. Oh, nice! It was just slip. Yeah. And it kind of made the same sound as the bricks, but it made more of a rattling sound. Right. Which is way cool neat. And um, I backed up into this corner where you can't see me. It's behind like one of the engines. So when you come in, it goes like this, and then you cut across, and then like right here is an engine, and there's a spot like right here. I'm hiding right there. Right. And uh, I'm. Backed into a corner. There's a wall back here with, like, more engine parts and, like, other stuff. And right here in this ear, like, I'm getting ready to scare. Like, I can hear him. And I right here in this ear, I just hear laughing. Oh, and nope. I, and there's no speakers. There's nothing. And it sounded like it sounded like a little girl. It sounded like Jackie. Right. Who wants the shit. She was just laughing in my ear. And, like, I freaked out. And it scared the shit out of me. And I just left. I didn't even get the scare. I just walked out. and just was like, nope. Yeah, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Uh-uh. <laughs> I, I, I've seen too many horror movies with laughter, and, and I, I usually know where that ends. So, uh, I, right? I was like, I know how this horror movie ends. I'm out. Yep. <laughs> You're like, I'm not going to be the hero in this one. I'm going to be <laughs> the coward, and I'm going to leave. Screw that. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> I, I want to live for another day. Capes, and this one definitely don't. He's gone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude. That, that's nuts, man. I mean, the paranormal is an interesting world to uh, to see, man. And, and I know that boat is no shy of stories, man. Uh Oh, yeah. There's so many ghosts and, and entities on that boat that it, it's it's trippy sometimes when when you see when you walk on the boat you just feel that kind of you know that that feeling of like you don't feel something doesn't feel right. Yeah. Um, that, that brings up another story. So we were doing media night one night. Right. Uh, it was me, Hunter, and Thing. It was me, Looney, and Thing. We're doing media night, and this was last year or not last year? Sorry, 2019. Right. Because uh, they didn't have hot last year. Sad. Um, oh yeah, I know. They, oh, God. They, uh, we did uh, media night, and we went by door thirteen, which is where Feast had run by that year. Right. And we're like, okay, go hide in this door. Like we're standing, like I'm looking at number thirteen, the door. I'm standing there, and I'm like, I can, I just feel angry. Like just, I'm like looking at everyone in here, and I'm like, you guys don't fucking belong here. You need to fuck me. Like I'm getting pissed. Right. And then I, my mood went from angry to like upset like i'm like we don't belong here we need to leave like we gotta go right and like they did the shot real quick and they were like all right we're going outside and i like gone i was like we don't belong in there like that's no joke yeah i've heard other people say stories about door 13 oh, man. like they would hit the wall they would hit the door like the number 13 and they would have scratches like they get shit that like that guy that that uh i don't remember his name and i, I don't want to butcher it i'm pretty sure i'm I want to say it's like John or Johnny or something like that, but it could be wrong. Yeah, that guy's no joke. He does not fuck around when it comes to his door. Like that's that's his area. Don't touch it. And I was like, <laughs> yes, sir. Like, I'm coming in there. I'm coming in there. Like, hey, listen, man. I'm just here to do a job. Me and you on the same page. You know, I brought a radio for you if you want to listen to some music. You know, you do you, brother. <laughs> yeah. Like when I was working on the ship, I would just be like, when I would go into my spot. I would go in maybe like 30 minutes prior before anybody else was in there. And I'd just go, I'm here with respect. I do not mean to disrespect you. I'm just here doing a job. And if I offend you in any way, I'm very sorry. Cause like these people, you, these people used to be people like, yeah, I don't know if everyone believes in ghosts that watches this stuff, but like I do. Cause yeah, I've experienced I experienced it. 
And so I'm like, I treat them with respect. Like I would a normal person on a daily basis because oh, yeah. they get upset about stuff too. Like that's their home and I'm invading their home, but I'm doing a job. So I just try to tell them like, Hey, I'm here to be respectful. And if I'm yeah. sorry, I'm disrespectful anyway. Hey man, that's big of you to do that though. You know, you gotta give, you gotta show them like, Hey, I'm just here to do a job. You know, you do you, <laughs> I'll do me. We're good. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, that boat. I mean, I, I've honestly had um, not only just hearing this paranormal stories because I'm a sucker for those. You know, I watch all the ghost shows. I watch all the ghost YouTuber top tens, top fifteens, whatever. Um, oh yeah, same sucker. Yeah, they reel me in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know, I'm a huge fan of it. My, my favorite guy is uh, Nuke's top five. Man, that guy. He always yeah, has yeah, some yeah. of the most bizarre shit I've ever seen. And yeah, I was just watching this video at, at work while we were waiting to leave and. I was just getting, and you know, the room I'm in is already on because every now and then we hear like a loud, like crack, like a like a loud, like something is up in the fucking ceiling walking. So it's already on an ease. So you know, nah. <laughs> yeah, I got a different job, bro. But freaking like it's funny because my coworkers they get all freaked out by it. I'm like, it's just probably the wind or something. The building's old. It's gonna crackle. Yeah. Or not. Okay, that's that's me. Like I'm a believer skeptic. Yeah. Like I believe, but if, like. I'm a believer, but, like, I also believe that, like, half this shit could be faked. So, I'm, like, yeah. I try to, like, lay it out, and I'm, all like, all right, I can't explain it. It's a ghost. Or if I'm, like, uh, you know, it's, like, the wind or something. Like, we're yeah. by a window, so, of course, it's going to blow the curtains out kind of deal. I, yeah, I, it's just, so, like, I've had nothing ever happen to me back there in that area. But, like, I heard, like, a couple, like, a month ago, one of the security guards was, like, yeah, I was closing up one night. And I heard whistling, and I thought it was outside. And then I backed the cart into the the compound garage, and then I heard it come from like the the storage room. And I like got scared and hurried up and closed everything and just dipped. And I was like, "It's because one of our one of our old custodians actually did pass away uh, when I was in high school. And uh, he didn't pass away at the school, but he passed away. He was just he was a nice person. His name was Kenny, and uh, we we think it's it's him watching over us." Um, oh, that's pretty dope. That's rad. Yeah, he was he was one of the nicest guys you can ever meet. But it, it, when she told me that, I was like, I'm back here all the time, and I never hear anything. Like, what what is with me that I just never get these experiences? <laughs> yeah, you're just it's not a magnet, bro. <laughs> I know. I guess not. I guess the ghost sees me and runs away instead of coming towards. You know, I mean, you got to be in tune, man. Got to be just be. I mean, there's other places. I mean, I've I've tried to scout my whole high school. Uh, you know, I used to go to high school at the at the school I currently work at. And okay, you know, I, that's I, pretty random. Yeah, I've heard that the locker rooms were haunted. Even though, like, the girls' locker room, when I walk in, the only thing I feel if I if I do it at night, the only thing I feel is just like if someone's watching me. But I've never heard or seen anything. Um, I've heard the NPR stage is haunted. I've actually experienced something in that when I was in high school. Um, something fell in like a locked cage, and I heard that and just t- bolted off. And like everybody's like, "What the fuck happened?" I was like, "I heard something fall in there." I don't know if you guys did, but. I, I was like in the I was like the only one by it and I wasn't even touching the cage and I heard something fall in there. Yeah. I was like, I ain't fucking with that. So yeah, no, I'd, I'd have the same reaction, just gone. Yeah. Everybody looked at me like I was crazy. I'm like, you guys didn't fucking obviously hear what I heard then. Shit. Um, yeah. But you know, I mean, you know, back to the Queen Mary though, man. I mean, it's just such a, a unique place and such a, a fun atmosphere for for Dark Harbor, man. I think. It, it, it's turning, it, you know, every time I hear a new story from someone who's worked there, I, I get more and more and, you know, interested into the event and, and just overall, I, I really want to go back. You know, I, I think the one time that I went, you know, I went twice that year, but it just wasn't enough for me. I think with like, if the 2020 year would have happened, I would have, I would have been more engaged into it. And then obviously with this year, it would have really been like a, a thing, but I, I know for sure that's a tradition of every year I'm going to it at least once. Um, you know, I mean, you guys, uh, you know, I've, I've heard the term a lot when I was interviewing the sliders and whatnot, uh, family. And I see that with this group. Um, oh. You know, the way you guys talk about each other, you know, the stories, the jokes, the whatnot, you know, it's it's a family. And, and that's how it should be, yeah. you know. It's definitely a, it's a tight knit family. Right. Like, we're not, we're not those people that go to a haunt and uh, have like a, a haunt family where we only talk like during haunt right we're friends year round like i call hunter all the time i don't even live in california anymore right. i moved away to college and uh i still talk to hunter omar and all of them i play cod with them all the time like and when i told everyone i was moving everyone was like was like upset about it like they were really sad because like they're not gonna be able to hang out like with me and i was definitely upset like i wasn't gonna be able to hang out with them they're my best friends 
Right. I also wasn't going to see my family, like my biological and haunt family every day, mm-hmm. like I used to. But they were like, this is your dream, so go get it. And like the most supportive people I've ever been a part of, like group wise. And I was in like ROTC in high school and stuff. And I don't even talk to half those people anymore. <laughs> All right. Talk to two of them. But my, my haunt family, my slider family, like I talk to them almost every day. I try to at least. Right. I mean, there's nothing like a good friendship that really will there there's always gonna be a couple people in your life that's gonna impact your life the most. Um, for me, obviously that goes to show uh my co host who's usually with me on the show, but uh we're still working scheduling stuff, but uh my, my co host Sammy. Um yeah. that guy's my ride or die, man. I mean, you know, we met in high school and you know, we we've kept in contact even after high school. And him coming back from college and him joining the, you know, the, the channel when he did, it, it's just been, you know, we've, we've grown a bond, a brother, you know, we're like practically brothers now. So, you know, when, when he moved away to Arizona, it was very hard on me as well. Um, yeah. but I still see him. I talk to him a lot and we do these, you know, we do through zoom and whatnot. And we're already planning stuff for haunt season and whatnot, but you know, it, I I do feel that. I mean, when you do when when you do move away or someone does move away and you, you're really close with them, it does hurt a lot. It really does because it feels like a piece yeah. of you is leaving, you know, to go off somewhere. And, and that that's how I felt when I was leaving. Like right. I felt like when I finally well okay so weird story when I got my acceptance letter to college, I was super stoked because I never thought I was even going to go to school. I was right. never really a smart kid. I was never one of the nerd, like the smart kids or the nerds, you could say. Yeah. I was just the guy that was like, all right, here, I'm in school. Like, I'll just get through it. It's like, go on with my life. And then I got my acceptance letter to college and I was like, fuck yeah, I'm actually going to college. Like, I'm going to do something. And I was like, oh shit, what about my, my family? What about my haunt? My, what about all this? And that last night of haunt when I was killed off was like one of the hardest things I probably ever had to do. And like fully commit like okay we're 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 done here it's time to time to set off on like new like on a new path kind of deal and it i i could feel it for everyone else i think everyone else is like really upset hunter actually on the last show wore sunglasses at night and uh was crying the whole time i was like are you okay and she's like yeah i'm fine i'm like you're crying she's like i'm not crying you're crying <laughs> Uh, like how I deal with like a sad situation is like I make jokes about it. One of the worst qualities about me, I feel like, is I could make a somebody could die, and I'm gonna make a joke. It's bad, but it yeah. makes people. If it makes someone laugh, then I know I'm okay. But like, right. everyone was like, they everyone was like, last show of the season. I'm like, it's the last show of my life. It's like I'm gonna die right now, and like, it is just like it was. It was like a heartbreaking thing when I like got I was so pumped. Like I was like, all right, this is the last show, but we're gonna make it awesome. So I put so much like all the rest of my might, my energy. I was so tired, I was exhausted, and I put everything I had into that show and like I feel like it was one of the best shows I've ever done. And up until that last moment where it was right at the end, I was like, This is it. Done. So Killis is just is retired now, huh? He's done? Is that what uh, I'm hearing? Because, listen, you know, on the Knights of Horror, I'm going to tell you this right now. On the Knights of Horror, I don't ever believe and never say – I always believe and never say never because you, I always think you know, that you're going to – you could – I mean, dude, I'm we, talking we to you talk and I got to see We Supernatural you. a little bit, and if Supernatural has taught us anything, it's nothing truly ever dies, yeah. and I'll leave it at that. All right. I mean, that's on record right there. Nothing truly ever dies. Who knows, man? He may return someday. But you gotta that, see. You gotta see, man. I mean, but let, 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 on a serious note, you know, if you ever had the opportunity to return and, and the timing was perfect, would you do it? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. If I got a call in October, like, hey, you got a plane ticket to come out for, even if it was just for a weekend, from Friday to Sunday or Friday to Saturday, and I had to be back on a plane on Sunday because I had to go back to school, they were like, hey, these two days, if you want them, they're yours. First plane out, I'm gone. Getting on a plane, I'm going home. <laughs> it makes me a little emotional, man, honestly. Um, and, like, not only am I going home to California, which is where I'm born and raised, 
and I get to see my parents and stuff, but I'm going home. I'm going to the queen. That's how I refer to it. That's home for me. That's like a second home. That's where we're like, I got my second, I guess, like a second start, my second family where I get to go. I, I, I'm curious now if Hunter's going to watch this and maybe tear up a little bit. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get, she, you're going to get a text from, she's going to text either me or you. Be like, you son of a bitches. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking uh, asshole. I'm just going to start laughing and I'll be like, what do you expect? <laughs> it's an emotional ride, man. I mean, that's what haunt season is though. And if, if 2020 has taught us anything, it's an emotional ride. It really yeah, is. Um, 2020 Wild. It was, and it, I think it was an emotional time for not only people like me who cover these things and who love going to these things, but to the people who put their blood, sweat, and tears like yourself, it must have been even more on a new level of heart right there, dude. Yeah, it it was. Um, I honestly was one of those dudes that had high hopes to the end. Yeah. When, uh, what was it, Midsummer Scream got canceled, I was like, oh, that's fine. Midsummer Scream will get canceled. Like, right. The haunts won't. Like, it'll all be done by then. Like, we'll right. be good. And then I saw, uh, I, th- I don't remember who put it in first, but they weren't doing the haunt that year because of COVID, but it was them. And I was like, okay, Dark Harbor, we're still on the list. Like, we're good. We're going to we're gonna do it. Like, we'll find a way around it. Right. And it was, I saw that post on uh, Instagram, and, like, my heart was just broken because that year, I was actually, no one really knew about this, but I was planning to come home for Halloween weekend. Oh, which, which is for us. Okay. So I've, I've kind of told a couple people this, um, I've labeled dark Harbor, like the punk rock version of the haunt. I like that a lot. I like that a lot (laughs) because we have Knott's Berry farm. The first people to do it. They're They're like the classic rock. They're like the suit and tie, like cream of the crop people. Best of the, like best of the best you you you're bringing in rock now. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna label like I'll, I'll label uh not scary farm because they're the OGs. They're the songs you know. That's the classic rock right there, man. Yeah, yeah, they're like the classic rock kind of deal. The lovers, and then you yeah. got like a uh, Universal, who's kind of like more com- like I would say like radio play rock, yeah. radio play metal because they gotta play to- KLOS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they gotta pr- they gotta play to the script of the movies and stuff. Right. So they're kind of like the the corporate push out kind of deal. Right. And then there's then there's Dark Harbor, the and like the punk rock grunge kids, like Casualties, Rush, like those the guys. Misfits, the freaking Dead Kennedys. You can get me exactly. going. I love Suicide punk dude. Right like, there, we're man. Those guys. I love it. Yeah, misfits. Love it. Yeah, we're those we're those guys who just kind of. Not do what we want per se, but like we've got our own path that we've cut our own teeth on and like go out and kill it. But I was going to come back for uh, Halloween that year and uh, for that weekend because how I've described Halloween to other people because everyone, like my friends and family ask me like, when's the best day to come? I'm like, Halloween. I'm like, why? Like Halloween parties and other stuff. Like it's going to be way more fun. I'm like, "Mm, nah, Dark Harbor at Halloween is really fun. They're like, why? And I'm like, it was like the best way I could describe it was the inmates have taken over the asylum. Yes, because we just go off. Yes, we bust out all of our crazy. This stuff. is what this is what you've been building to right here. This yeah, day, like we, like the first week, second week, third week, child's play. Halloween is what we live for. That's where we're gonna we're gonna go balls to the wall in your face. You've got no chance of survival, kind of deal. Misfits is Halloween is on freaking repeat all damn day for me. Yeah. Oh, so. Jan told a story on his podcast episode of when Slipknot played, the DJ played Slipknot up at the front. Right. This is another story about how I scared the, the hell out of some girl without even doing anything. <laughs> um, we were up in the front scaring, and we were just going off, right. going crazy. And at one point, so you've been to there, so you know that they have these seat containers that are right there. Right. I walked up to a seat container when, like, uh, they were playing the song, and, like, right when Clown hits the... Uh, the keg right. I smacked my head against the uh the container and i did it like a couple times and this girl was like oh my god like just freaking out and i turned around and looked at her and she was just like nope and like took off running into the gates and i was just i was like it's gonna be good i mean i'm the i'm the psychopath who would be like circle pit right now let's go yeah pretty much that's what we were doing is circle pitting like the whole groups that were coming in we were just Line them up, knock them down, kind of deal. Yeah, and it was just it was the most fun. And 
as soon as the song ended, I was like, my feet hurt, my calves. <laughs> I was like, I still have two shows to do. <laughs> Oh man! I blew, out my, I blew out in like three minutes. <laughs> Just done. Uh, it was worth it though, man. I mean, that's that's the moment you oh, yeah. live for, right there. Hundred um, percent. You know what? I I I I I may have seen you, and you know, obviously, now that I'm meeting everybody and I'm putting faces to characters and and seeing everybody, I I probably may have seen you in 2019. Uh, like yeah, I said, 2019 was the first year, so I was just kind of taking it all in, but. Yeah, um, you more than likely. I would say you more than likely saw me because I went everywhere. Right. Everyone, everyone has their spot. Uh, I didn't really have a spot. I liked to roam the whole map of Dark Harbor. Right. That would work different areas because there would be areas where it was heavily populated, and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna work a crowd here, and then I would go somewhere where it's maybe a little bit lighter foot traffic. And I was like, oh, I'm just gonna hide somewhere and scare, <laughs> or like guest interact. I just, I just had like a whole thing of like. Don't stop moving and keep right. it going and entertain everybody, entertain as much people as you could. That yeah. was my thing. You know, Dark Harbor, the first, uh, you know, it was funny when I interviewed uh, Cavities about this. The first thing that comes to mind every time I think of Dark Harbor is his character taking a lollipop out of his mouth and then putting it in someone else's mouth. I had yeah. never seen that ever at a haunt, and I was just the, like, The community lollipop. This is how the yeah. night's going to go. I'm, I'm pretty down with that, but all right, what a good start for me to come into a yeah, new event. That- that made it into every mouth on the slider team. And fun fact, my girlfriend that uh, listened to the podcast episode with me, with Cavities, we were driving. Right. She heard it and heard him say, like, it ended up in everyone's mouth. And she was like, no fucking way. And I went, what? And she was like, that was the sucker that I had. And I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I was like, you would fuck with anybody who came through, like, and especially if we knew you, you were getting it way worse than anybody yeah. else. Like, he's my girlfriend, so of course she's getting it worse than everyone else. See, this is why but, none of you guys had COVID because you guys were already immune yeah. to all this shit. Yeah, we we yeah. eat dirt and eat we eat dirt and suck other people's. Yeah, you, you, were like, you were like you were like you were already pre prepared for everything, man. This is this I'm was, immune. Yeah, <laughs> can't kill me. I'm Iron Man, man. <laughs> yeah, there you go, man. I mean. Yeah. I'd eat food off the floor. People drop it. I'd eat funnel cake off the floor. All kinds of crazy stuff. You know, you, they you go name for the, it. It's like in slow motion. They go, you know, the beer spills and you're going in slow motion and you're trying to get every drop in your mouth. And <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> we, I've had a couple of times people throw their drinks in my face because it scared them so bad. Like they just had a reaction. They go, oh shit. And like they just. How does the makeup hold up on that? Does it just smear off? Uh, no, my makeup artist, Jay Artist, uh, Jay Q Artistry. His name's Jay. He's a nice guy. Right. Love Jay. If he ever watches this, Jay, I love you. Thank you for making me awesome. Couldn't do it without you. He does this uh, setting spray that just Keeps boxes it in. Nice. I could, I could do one of these. Wouldn't smear. That's awesome. And I sweat bad. Yeah. My first year on the slider team, like, I would go out for an hour and a half. I look just like this <laughs> ugly fucking face and someone would come up to me and go hey you need to go to makeup i'm like is it bad and they're like you don't have any on i'm like oh shit <laughs> makeup i'll get touched up and then i got a hold of jay and just he hooks it up that's the homie right there man um yeah man that is yeah that is nuts because i i've always wondered about that you know obviously with with makeup and liquid doesn't mix well. <laughs> not not all the time. Some people like well. Some people won't do the setting spray. Other people do. I do it because I sweat a lot. Right. And, uh, can't look scary with a bare face. <laughs> can't look. Ugly. You can't look scary with this this ugly mug of mine. <laughs> you got to put some makeup on it. <laughs> uh, I mean, for me, I'm always you know I always have the long hair and the beard, so I'm just known to be called the Wolfman at this point. And, yeah, man. You know, I got my boy Frankie in the back. You know. We just hit yeah, it yeah, hard. Yeah. Yeah, man. We just hitting it hard, man. I mean, listen, man. I, I me personally as a fan, I would love to see Killis return. And I hope one day you you have that opportunity to do do, do that if you ever get the free time. Like I I hope it happens. I honestly hope so too, but we'll see yeah. what the future holds. Otherwise, you got to bring your you got to bring your butt all the way out here to Ohio because uh last year they still did haunts out here they were doing haunts i worked one night at a haunt called hammer brothers uh haunted circus right it was pretty fun it was a rated r haunt and uh nice 
I got to do a lot of stuff that I wanted to do at Dark Harbor, but wasn't able to do. <laughs> got to uh, <laughs> got to experience something new, man. That's that's what's up. Yeah, uh, and it was wild. It's wild seeing the differences. Right. Crazy. From yeah. The west coast of the Midwest slash East Coast, I guess you can call it. Like the yeah. scary stuff. Everything was weird. It was different, but I liked it. I enjoyed it. That's why I'm excited. Uh, we're trying to get a trip going to uh, HHN in Orlando this year for the 30th anniversary. Yeah, man. And uh, I want to see the big differences, man. I always hear that they have top tier houses and whatnot over there, so I, I got to see it for myself, man. I hear that too, and I'm trying to I'm trying to come up with an excuse to go there like, yeah. to to check it out because yeah. I want to see the differences too. I want to go to uh, Cedar Point out here. It's in Ohio. Right. They own Knott's Berry Farm, actually. It's Cedar Fair Park. Right. I hear up there, it's like top tier cream of the crop. Like, if you ain't working Cedar Point, you ain't nothing kind of deal. You might have to. Like, I mean, you least, might have to submit. Here, you might have to submit an application, man. They, they they pay for housing for people that live far away. So I've thought about it. There you go. I've thought about it. There you go. But we'll see what the future holds. Yeah. I got I got no per, I've got no guarantees right now about what exactly I'm doing. But right. if uh, hopefully this COVID stuff lifts up, I might see Killis back at Dark Harbor on a surprise weekend that no one will know about. <sighs> You might have to give me a yeah, little keep he- eyes up. You might have to give me a little heads up so I can buy a ticket, you know, and just say yeah, that's, just, you know, yeah, that's yeah, what I'm got- talking about, man. <laughs> well, my team's definitely not gonna know, that's for sure. The only person that knows is the Knights of Horror, and they're gonna be like, Why the hell are you here? Because I got <laughs> word someone was gonna be here and I wasn't gonna miss it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Yeah, man. Oh man. Uh Man, it, it's been awesome talking to you, man. I got to ask you one last question before we wrap up. Usually, and you've probably been watching the show, so you probably know what's coming. But the hardest question that people always struggle with at the end, what's your favorite horror film? Oh, man. See, I have been watching the episodes, and I do know that question. But it was so hard to pick when I was thinking about it. And, like, I've, on, I've only come down to two because they're two different movies that I can watch anytime. One of them, my boy Chucky. Chucky. One of my favorite. I was scared of him as a kid, and he, like as I grew into an adult, made it awesome. So I love Chucky. Right. And then my favorite, which was like a cult classics a series, um, was Jigsaw, the Jigsaw series. Saw man, did you see the new trailer for the Spiral film? I did. I'm looking I forward really to did. it. I think it's going to be I pretty am, good. I'm looking forward to it too. And I've got another one too, another cult classic. Uh, it's Rob Zombie movies, House of a Thousand Corpses, uh, Devil's Rejects, and Three from Hell. Three from Hell, right there, man. I love, the, I I've love got, those films. I've got all their movies, and I got, um, I got like a couple of posters and stuff of like Cat Spaulding and like other stuff. That's my favorite clown right there. Other than Still Penny. one of the greatest horror endings of all time in Devil's Rejects with Freebird. Yeah, Hands yeah, down. it was. Hands down. Hands down. I agree with that. Hands and down, not going to argue that one. That was a good one. And if you like that, watch Willy's Wonderland because they have a similar one. And I was just like, oh. I'm about to check that out because I've didn't. i never heard of Willy's Wonderland, but I'll have to check that out. Nick Cage, man. Does not give me a movie, now I'm going to give you one. They say one out, of, uh, one out of ten, one out of five people die after watching this movie. It's called The Shadow People. Bring it on. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a wild movie, man. It's Shadow People. Let's do wild. it. I'm I'm down. Let's do it. One out of you said one out of ten people die when they watch it. It's one out of ten or one out of five people die after watching the movie because they develop the symptoms that the people portray in the movie. So, so if you see don't my, be on those, if you see my name that on one. that five o'clock news, you know. Yeah. <laughs> don't be that one. Be the the other five. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or the but other you, four, I guess. But if you happen to see if you happen to see my name on the five o'clock news, just know you might have been my last podcast. So let's make sure this yeah. gets out. Yeah, man. Let's do it. In my memory, let's do it. Um, kill us, man. It has been a pleasure talking with you. Um, I think we've played Xbox before, honestly. We probably have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we've played a couple games, man. Yeah. We got a dub. Yeah. Um, but I, I want to thank you for coming on. I want to thank you for all that you do uh, out there on the streets, man. We appreciate yeah, man, it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, really, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Uh-uh. This, is, this is fun. I'm glad you got to share your story, man. This is why we do this show. So we have a platform for people like you to share their stories, man. And I love it. Yeah, love hearing them. I love sharing stories. So if you ever want to do a second episode. Hey, man, I got a whole nother episode called Shoot the Shit. We could talk about anything you want on there. So there we go, man. We'll do We'll do one. We'll set up one of those. We can talk about some real stupid shit. I'm down, man. I'm down. So we'll do that for sure, man. But uh, before we log off, do you have any social media you would like to plug for people to go check you out? 
Uh, sure. You can follow me on Instagram. It's a uh, killis underscore the underscore clown. It's pretty much it. All I do is post like on stuff and I don't post too often. So when I do usually it means something, I guess. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Go follow him on uh, Instagram. Keep up. Maybe you'll see him. Uh, maybe he'll start teasing a return. Who knows what's going to happen mm-hmm. with killis. Might return like the fiend, man. Wrestlers. Oh my god, you brought up wrestling, and we're ending the yeah. show. Come on, man. I, just, I had to save it for the end. Had to oh, save it for the man. end. Oh man, we'll save that for shoot the shit. Then we'll save it for shoot the shit. There you go. There we it got. Is, I got you. We got it. Uh, with All that right. being said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of Mindless Heart Podcast. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and leave some comments down for Killis so he can read them. Um, also, if you guys are new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button with that bell notification be aware every time we put up a new video. We are also on social media, at the Knights of Horror on Instagram and at Knights of Horror on Twitter. With all that being said, we will see you guys next week. See you. All right. I'm on the... uh...